Today, Realm Walkers, I'm taking you through the complete guide to the Elder Eton, how to do the quest passively, how to take it on, and especially taking it on as part of the Vault boss runs on hard mode. Yes, I'm going to explain that as well, and why you should think about doing this to get more essence. But first, how to do it passively, the steps to find it, pretty much everything you need to know. Do leave a like, find this useful. I did end up actually putting two videos together here. I was going to produce this first one, the passive route, and then the boss fight in the vault separate. But I figured actually it made sense to put them together. But we'll leave a timestamp in if you want to skip just to the vault boss on hard mode if you've already gone past this stage. So the download, you're going to need to go to the Nelly Bly or go to the Antiquarian Swamp, find the NPC there, do some fishing for her, give her some other items. You'll get the ritual fabled meat recipe, which you can then give to the Elder Eton. You'll get a hearth card, the cooking knife augmentation, and I do believe a refined alchemical bench, plus some baubles and six charm twine. So now, the slightly longer explanation. So you don't have to go and speak to Nelly Bly, but it will give you distinctly the next missions to go to, in case you haven't gone to an antiquarian swamp and found that particular NPC just yet. Nelly Bly can be found in the Herbarian Desert, so not too far off from getting to. Top tip, play the trickster card and you can go ahead and withstand having to climb a lot. She's always on a large cliff that you probably will have to use your climb picks on unless you've changed this. It's kind of ridiculous how easy it becomes when you can jump about 50 feet in the air. Make sure you've got your umbrella and you're aiming right and you should be able to scramble up the cliffs to see her. Obviously though, you may want to be careful. If you go and harvest any resources or complete any encounters on this map, some of the stuff that you're going to be getting is going to be very different. That's what the trickster card does. It turns wood into, I do believe, skin and dead creatures into stone when you harvest them. Anyway, clamber up and you should find her. If you look on the map, she's always at by the essence trader as well, if for some reason you can't spot her. And this is pretty much the same method for all of the other creatures. She's gonna give you a lead on where to find the NPCs. That will then give you the info to go ahead and take on the creatures passively to get their resources. Once to skip all this, then you just simply need to head over to a forest hunt realm and find the Elder Eton. You'll have to kill it, but it is maybe a quicker method if you've got the hunt cards unlocked already. Otherwise, you need to head to the Antiquarian Swamp and go ahead and look for Ludvine St. Clair. You'll need to deliver three curative potions. They're the ones that have got like a clam shape to them. To craft them, you're going to need tier one swamp fiber. So that means going and finding the different colored trees on the swamp and hacking away at some of the fibers around it. So you probably need a sky level of at least, I think it's 30, 40. Some hide, some glass and five essence dust. And that's your curative potions. And if you haven't unlocked the alchemical boiler yet, that's how you make them. Once you give them to her, do keep talking to her, making sure you go through every single option. Sometimes it's at the very bottom of the scroll wheel and you might have missed out. You're looking for the ones with the little white nightingale bird signal. You get a little reward of a card, I do believe a minor card, and then you can go ahead and talk to her again. She'll have an exclamation mark above her head and this is where she's gonna ask you now to go and do some fishing. So as part of what you need to craft and give to her, you need to deliver eight fen bass oil. So that means capturing 16 fen bass fish, as it's two fish equals one oil, unless you've got any other cards working that can duplicate or double it. You also need cut raw gem, in this case amber. Again, check your glossary to find it on the realms and what power that you may need for that card. And some cloth that you'll be able to go ahead and make at one of your spinning wheels. If it's not appearing in the first one, you may need the upgraded refined one. So the Fen Bass, they can be caught in any swamp water. They may be in other places, but I do believe this is the best concentration. They are level 30 fish, so if somehow you have got a fishing rod, the most simple one, you may need to upgrade it to uncommon to just help capture it a bit. Fishing is relatively simple. You just literally hold the left button down, I do believe, or on controller it was the RT button, and just keep your fishing rod aimed at the fish. You're meant to move the fishing rod left and right a little bit, to give a bit of tension so the tension line stays in the middle and some fish really low level ones that you'll end up catching a lot of that's pretty easy to do but you don't really want to break the line so that's what I did I more or less just guided the fish just held on to it occasionally switching left or right off the screen and back quickly and you'll hopefully start to gain some I do recommend you play some of the cards 
or add some charms that can give either more essence or stop you getting hungry while you fish. This took a good long time as I was getting a lot more of the other types of fish than the fen bass. You can make your oil at a refined tanning station or a refined mortar station, either one it doesn't matter. So for your trouble you'll get the ritual fabled meat and you now need to craft two of these, one to give to Ludvine and one to keep to give to the tree. I also got the grilled fish recipe for completing this too. So to make the fabled meat you are going to need again more gems but this can just be exactly all the same gem, in this case amber. Fabled meat will be from any named creature and you'll clearly see it in your inventory as it's got a little crown on it. In fact if you don't want to waste your amber it can be just regular quartz that you put in here as well. It is entirely optional, you don't have to actually return to Lodvine St. Clair to give her the other one, you could just go straight to the Elder Eton now. But by doing so, this is how you actually get the cooking knife, which unlocks a bunch more cooking recipes. Once you've bought them, and it is tied to an achievement as well. So it's off to a hunt forest. Now normally, it will be by some large structures, and if you stick to the roads, you normally find one close by. They can be in the ground and it might be a bit hard to spot because of that reason and you'll find that your spyglass might not always highlight them. It will highlight the other lesser item, so don't get confused because there are two types and these are just the regular ones that you'll see. Apparently it wanders around at night time a bit more so that might also be beneficial. But if you're still having trouble you can always go ahead and craft the track legend spell and this will also find and highlight any alphas or apex creatures. Best bet is to put it on your knife or sickle and job done. It should lead you along the path to the Elder Eton. You'll know when you come across one though because its tree is much thicker and more kind of shapen than a lot of the other trees. It looks like a proper gnarled swamp tree. And if it is moving around you'll notice a huge massive health bar that will pop up on screen as well. So you really can't miss it if you've got the right time of day or you've gone and explored some near the big structures. But here it was here. Again, I don't know how I missed this, I spent about an hour running around this map before realising I could go and craft a spell to help me. Whatever you do, don't go ahead and hit it, instead just go over to its offering and place the meat inside. It will then literally just spit out the heart on the ground, so make sure you do pick it up. And that's how you complete this passively without having to fight it. Now if you do go ahead and fight it, you will get more of the Elder Hearts that you can use later as well. If you're doing this mission for a group of friends, yes, you only get one, but if you do kill it, I think you get four. So go ahead and wait on it afterwards if you want, and then you'll be able to get even more. Word of warning though, if you really don't have enough gear, high level gear at least anyway, you're going to find this fight pretty tough. Although it doesn't help that I had this on hard, so clear out any enemies around before you do go and fight it. There's nothing worse than being third party, and because it moves around quite a bit, that can happen. So also pay attention to any ruins nearby if they've got any aid, because some of them NPCs will come and help you. And now let's cut to the video that I said I was going to produce separately, taking you on how I defeated the Vault 1 on hard mode with my good pal Katari. So to make this fight hard, extreme or even easier, you do need to craft your own portal and the vault cards, which you can only get from going to the watch and buying it. And then you have to play that card and reset that realm every time you do one of these boss fights. But you do get more essence the harder the difficulty is. So we did this with Katari on hard mode and it was a challenge for sure before using any juiced OP weapons that you might have seen some videos from me and others showing you how you can kind of exploit. So bearing in mind I have got a decent pickaxe here, you should have epic ones. And you can see I'm really aiming for that critical point but I'm not doing much more than 200 odd damage. It might go up to 300, but that's obviously the first tip is try and get hits in on these orbs. I feel that's pretty obvious. If you hadn't worked that one out, I don't know what games you play. That said, when you do go and smack at it, you might be thinking, hey, I should be getting critical hits. Why am I not getting a nice little ping? Why is it not going yellow? It does look like one of these legs, one of these orbs is more susceptible to critical hits than the other. I've tried verifying this looking at all the gameplay footage, nothing visually really shows you or tells you that one of them is different, they've all got either the blue glow or purple glow around it, but for sure, as I'll show you in a minute, running around and trying out the different orbs, you'll see that one of them will be giving you more critical damage. 
Now, when things get a bit hairy, you need to get your distance away to reheal, but it's hard, obviously, with all the thorn branches popping up. And then when it does that ground pound, it's pretty tough, especially on hard difficulty like we were doing. Flame damage is obviously going to do damage over time. Ice bullets weaken it and make it more susceptible to damage. So if you've got your friend wailing on it with a melee weapon, or you get a quick shot in and then run in after. Poison, yeah, it's going to do more damage than a regular bullet, but not a huge amount. Unless a rifle, then that seems to be doing a good amount, especially if you can aim right at them orbs, and you're a bit more safe from danger. You then only have to deal with the wisps actually attacking, so it could be a good bet to keep your distance from all of the thorns too. So me and Kit did actually die, so we had to come back and it respawned all of its health, so that's another thing to counter if you are doing this with a team try and get one of you to respawn and come back on their own rather than both of you at the same time but look how much damage i'm doing now with that one shot five thousand and then i promise you i was pulling off a lot more and i felt like i was hitting the right spots on these orbs but they weren't doing nowhere near as much damage at some point it normally takes a standstill i don't know if it's bugged or glitched or maybe it's meant to be rejuvenating and getting his energy back from what I can tell, if the leg is lower, like the other ones, then this is the one that will have the best critical hits on it. You can see now my hits are definitely the gold colour, even though I'm using a crapper weapon like the pickaxe instead of an axe. In this case anyway, but I am pulling off them critical hits on it. So pay attention, if the leg is slightly lower than the others, that's the one you need to aim for when it's having its little chill moment. I'm going to test this a lot more and definitely see if absolutely is a way to find out which one is the weak spot other than just trying to remember. Obviously it's spinning around quite a lot as well so that's another thing that puts it against it. You can see a shot there, I was barely doing any damage there with red markers showing that them bullets just weren't that effective. But this is what sold it for me. Here I am just absolutely wailing on this and I'm barely actually doing any damage. You can see once I get close enough and then I moved over to this one and the same thing again, not really doing it. But I felt like I was hitting right on the spot. But then I moved over to this leg and bam, I had my gold numbers. So one of the branches, one of the pods is definitely a weaker spot than the others. So to recap, if you're playing solo, make sure you've got a good ranged weapon with plenty of either ice or fire ammo. You're always picking up your follower in case you do get ground pounded and you need that resource. And look out for the particular weak spot leg or orb. Test, go and see which one will have it and then focus in on that. It may change during the fight. That's something else I want to test out in future. But for sure, once it has its chill moment, focus on that with an axe rather than a pickaxe. And this is the amount of orbs that you get when you're doing it on hard. You get nearly double the amount of essence that you would normally from just completing the ones in the vault or medium mode. Obviously, if you're doing this, you will have to reset and play a vault card every time. So it might get a bit more expensive in some of them resources. But obviously, it's still a great thing to get double the amount of essence. And if you're thinking of extreme, you get around 70 essence per pod. So not massive a huge amount more i would say it's probably worth in terms of time investment taking on enemies only really ever doing vaults on hard unless you've got super duper op gear through the exploits that have been going around and that's it i'll see you at bags for more nightingale videos soon